Greetings, nerds. This is Sina Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont. And with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well, Sarah. Hope you are doing well. I'm doing all right. I mean, it's That's, September. Yeah, I know. And it's just like, man, where has this year, year gone? But uh, yeah, looking forward to... I know we got quite a few shows coming up this month, but uh, yeah, we're catching up on some things that... Uh, Looked interested this summer, such as Supercell. So uh, I know we'll be talking about that. I had a couple, I guess, legacy media items too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Josh, like Josh Berlin being offered the role of Green Lantern, Hal, Green Lantern's Hal Jordan and Damian Lindenloft's Lanterns, which is supposed to be a DC studio series. Yeah, yeah. So this is the, uh, yeah, this is one of the new series that were, well, there were two of them lit, green lit. One that I think that that was put to the side, but this one is definitely going into production under James Gunn's new DC Studios banner. And um, yeah, Josh Bolin apparently was according to Jeff Snyder, uh, who's a well-known scooper, and also another website I think it's called Nexus uh, also was working that story, but uh, said that the offer is his if he wants it. And I think the I from what I've what I've been gathering, at least from Jeff Snyder's report, is this new Lantern series is sort of a, as a buddy cop type of thing because the other Lantern, of course, we saw in the uh, key art that was uh, dropped a few months ago, was Hal Jordan, um, and then also we we saw a young John Stewart. So it looks like they're just doing a reverse lethal web. Is Hal Jordan, who is the old grizzled vet, and and I guess John Stewart is playing the Riggs role as far as the younger guy he's taken under his wing. Mm. <clears throat> I feel like it's going to take me a while to believe that something about the Lanterns is really in the work just because I feel like we've heard about series and movies for a decade. Yeah, yeah <laughs> so. for sure. Yeah, we do know we have at least we at least have Nathan Fillion as Guy Gardner. So we do yeah. know we have that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. For now, you know, yeah. people people have dropped out all the time. <laughs> nah, Superman. Superman is wrapped. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I know that. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> Superman has wrapped, and um, Superman and Lois is on a new. Will be returning for their final season in October, but on a new night. And are they moving to Thursdays? What night is it? So they originally were going to be moving to Thursday, and they were going to come out later in October. But the CW has moved their release date up to October the 7th, which mm-hmm. is a Monday night. And they'll still have the two-hour premiere, and it will and it will proceed the rest of the, uh, I guess, 10-episode or so run um, on Monday nights at 8 o'clock. And really, the, the, the whole thing with this is CW originally had game shows scheduled for Monday night, but ABC also was going to be scheduling game shows on Monday night, so... So CW was like, well, we don't want to get our game shows asses kicked, so we're going to move the game shows to Thursday night or or one other night during the week, and then we'll put Superman and Lois on Monday night since it's their last season, so they can get their ass kicked in the ratings. People still watch game shows. I guess yeah, they're cheap. <laughs> yeah, I guess yeah, they're they still. Are, they are. I totally understand why studios will make them. Yeah. Totally yeah. understand that. I just. The whole the viewership thing happening yeah. is beyond they, me. Yeah, um, I guess they, they 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 still are very popular and do well on linear TV for sure. Yeah. Yeah, good for them. Yeah. Um, so we just had a long weekend. It's um, Tuesday, our normal recording time, but we did have three days off. Did you watch anything over the long? I mean, I know we're going to get into Supercell, but anything yeah. else? Uh, I finally finished Star Trek Discovery. Um, okay. and really, and got deeper into Star Trek Prodigy. So those are really the only other than, other than sports that, that that was really the um only like scripted shows that I watched over the weekend. Yeah, yeah, that that makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. It is three days, and we both did take up at least two of them doing stuff. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So while you were watching Star Trek, I did. I did finish the eight episode series The Frog on Netflix. Oh yeah. I, yeah remember. I still don't know if I would recommend it. Okay. It's it's slow. It's slow. Mm. It it really kicks in 
Um, and they do a good job with planting a seed or raising a question. And then like, really the big thing, why the heck is this called the frog? Um, mm. And there is a payoff. It is rooted in um, a, a Korean proverb, if you will. So, so it's, there's more cultural context um, than I think our a foreigner like myself watching it would understand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I wasn't mad at it by the end of it. Um, it um, I, I thought overall it was it it was good, um, okay. a good payoff. But I still don't know if I would necessarily like go out and say no. You have to watch it because this amazing thing happens now. Nothing crazy really happens. Okay. Um, or like you have to watch this. So I did that. I'm still um and and I'm I'm pretty timely with this show because they just drop two episodes a week. So so I'm still watching Romance Next Door, which is a different K drama. Okay. And I'm really enjoying that. It's really cute, really fun, very predictable, but still love the chemistry between the leads and um just the overall characters themselves are are pretty pretty well defined. I feel like there was something else I watched, but I'm just not thinking about it. I talked about the two characters. Yeah, so yeah. so just just making my way, and then and then I watched Super Self. So which, what you think about it? Okay, so far nothing special. Um, it reminds me so much of a different British superhero show called Misfits. Yeah. Pretty sure that's what it was called. You have yeah. you seen Misfits? I have not, but I've heard about it. And I've heard that, oh. that I've heard a very similar um viewpoint uh, as well that this yeah. that yeah. It's it's not it's not one for one. Mm. There there is just and it's more and it but it also goes beyond. They're just clearly both British shows. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it goes beyond that too. But Misfits, for those who do not know what that show it is, it's essentially you have a group of teenagers, young adults who are doing community service and end up encountering something that gives them powers. Mm. Um, and I think it goes on for two to three seasons. Very well done. There is a character, um, and this is what really sealed the deal for me, who, and this is kind of a spoiler, but not really a spoiler. I have to get this point through. So if you don't want to know, just go watch the show. But so spoiler. So by the end of the first season, a girl dies. And she was in a relationship with one of the other characters who had time traveling abilities. So mm. you see where I'm going with this. So there, there's a lot of uh, parallels. Future. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. A yeah. lot of parallels there. And I'm like, okay, yeah. I, I've seen this and, and Misfits executed that whole timeline thing very well. And then it just got me thinking how, how many shows have occurred with this trope of a character mm -hmm. who unexpectedly or gets time travel ability specifically, and then they end up losing someone or have lost someone. And then it's a, like, it feels like the rest of the show is just about them trying to prevent that mm -hmm. from occurring. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. a well, -worn. Yeah, it's a well-worn trope, and yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I, and I think you know, I, and and I have a very similar view as far as even, you know, as far as this show being the the the, the characters or the superhero powers and stuff being derivative of plenty of things that are out there. Uh, so that's, but I think for me, what got I I really got invested with the show. Um, because of the cast and the, this, and also just the story, even though I've seen this, like you're saying, and we've seen this story before where a, the protagonist is having to, you know, trying to rescue someone that they love and, you know, and, and there are various MacGuffins put into play, into, into play as far as, you know, 
obstacles to 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 keep to, to keep that from happening or 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 if he or she overcomes them then you know they they will save that person but i think for me it was just it was just that and then also i think that, you know it was the cast it was, it was just very very dynamic and um just really drew me in also whenever when i first time i actually heard the name of the show super cell i couldn't help but I think I've maybe even mistakenly said sickle cell because of just the fact that they do make it a very uh, a plot point in this in this mm-hmm. story with, about Michael, who is the who is the lead character that we're just talking about as far as the, having the time travel abilities. Uh, his mother, uh, you know, carrying that trait and being and that's one that you know, from. You know, in African American, Afri- and it's people of African descent. That is a a very um, you know genetic this you know one of those disorders that um, you know that that is very it is rare, but it but it it is but it does happen. And you know, and even in, when I was in law school, I actually had a classmate who uh, she uh, she did have sickle cell disease. And so uh, you know, so some of the things that while that scene was playing out with Michael's mom and and all. And and it's also just some of the things about the disease and the fatigue and and you know blood, those issues, um, you know question. I was uh, yeah sick- I was very familiar with it yeah yeah question is sickle cell like is is the full disease name called sickle cell anemia yeah okay okay yeah. because for a moment there you kept just saying sickle cell and I'm like wait is that something different than the no. one that has me. <laughs> No, no, it's sickle cell anemia. I mean, I think more okay. people come, it's more commonly known. Got it. That. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I thought, I thought that was an interesting plot point to just, just go back to the time travel stuff. Yeah. I'm not like, I'm not mad at it. It's, it's, huh. it is different. Um, but, and it goes beyond the powers. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's more of just the, the the vocal like the focal point i feel like any time time travel is inv- involved <laughs> <laughs> like i mean think about it what if there's an episode of what if that has a lot of time travel in it that we love yeah. and it's not like the um Doctor Strange is known for his time travel abilities, but they put right. him in the situation of course it all had to do with trying to save his his uh his girlfriend or wife mm-hmm. or whatever her name is that i'm blanking on yeah. um so so it's just like i feel like whenever just time travel is involved in general it's always that like trying to change it and then nine times out of ten and so this is this it'll be interesting to see which way they go with it um the character either realizes you you can't prevent it because mm-hmm. that's destiny, that's fate. Mm-hmm. And usually what happens in that scenario, they prevent it only for the world to get worse. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. And then the whole second season is about trying to undo it. So we'll yeah. just We'll, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, yeah, and the show has been it has been renewed for a second season. Exactly. And I think you're great. Get, yeah, and uh, I I know over the weekend I, I did I, when I was driving down to um, visit my mom. I I found a podcast where Rap Man, who is the uh, creator mm-hmm. and showrunner, director, writer, he did, he did it all for shows. <laughs> I think except for maybe except for effects, but uh, he did. He was talking about how the show got green lit, and uh, he actually did say that. Um, he actually has three seasons in mind mm-hmm. for a show. So, to, so, so you're right. I mean, so uh, clearly we're just getting started. So, just so folks know, we're we're not doing the whole season right in this episode. We're going to break it up over the next few weeks two. till two yeah. episodes. Yep, one yeah. and two. Yeah. One and one two. two. We're yeah. taking our time because we got it. We got to stretch it. Before we can get to Penguin and Agatha, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> but also, well, and and also we're doing what the story did because honestly, I mean, they they this this first episode was very deliberate as far as just setting up these key these characters, uh, and taking and taking our time with them. 
Um, well, I don't know if it was taking its time because I had a very different experience. I felt like it was very fast in terms yeah. of sprinkling in characters and faces mm -hmm. um, sporadically, very conveniently. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Con conveniently um, and trying to weave the web of how these strangers end up becoming um, who they are, who we see at the end of the first episode yeah. are, are in the future, yeah. um, which is a team. And so mm -hmm. they're no longer strangers. And so they got it. But they also, it was also trying to set up that universe, um, that world, while trying to give each character a um, small insight into what their conflict will be for yep. the season, like their personal story, as well as do they, are they aware about their powers? Like, do they have, like, and, 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 and Michael's really the first one we see, and we mm -hmm. learn in the second episode that T Taser has actually had his, has, has been aware about his powers arguably longer Part yep. of me wonders if we're ever going to get a, a flashback to when when he woke up. I don't think it's needed, no. but um, it is something about trying to understand the timeline um, because the, then the bigger there's a bigger seed of okay, so why? Yeah. Um, because they also all seem to have had arguably different ways of of um, having their their powers ignite or mm -hmm. be revealed. Um, initially, because Michael gets stabbed by Taser, yep. I, I think, I thought like, oh, they have to have a near-death experience. No, 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 because Jasmine did, did not. Nope. <laughs> she nope. she kind of did because she almost gave herself a heart attack because she almost killed someone, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um so 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 I I guess my point is I felt like it moved very quickly and it was at a pace where they knew they had to do a lot mm -hmm. because the really to start the story is that last 10 minutes of Michael in the future. Yeah. Um, yeah. Everything else is just set up and just just trying to get get something like some sort of like name to face <laughs> started. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I guess what I said, when I say slow, slow storyline, I think in, in it, I, 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 ref, I reference that by just, you know, you know, instead of like, you know, some crazy meteorite or something coming out of the sky and then like, right. you know, dark matter blows up on the city and then everybody gets these, you know, these only these black people get these powers um you know you know they 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 well one you know when we first when we first get up you know the cold open from the credit is mm -hmm. like we you know we're we're in that it, we, we see the the one uh one of the two people that was referenced in the episode you know she's uh running down you know broken out of her cell running down a corridor trying to, to try to get free and and then they have the very you know very stark and i you know situation where you know they do shoot her in the back and stuff to keep her from getting out and then dragging her with the blood on the floor and, and stuff and i you know so just me as a black man and just seeing that it just i think that's what like was one of those things that just like pulled me in to this story mm -hmm. because it was sort of it was it was different it was not it, it i don't want to i don't want to say fresh in the sense of fresh like oh this is so cool but fresh in that oh we are going to like yes this this is a yes we see that this is a superhero show, but we're going to get you we're going to pull you in and take you on a different route than a lot of these other things in the genre does, and so I that opening pulled me into like oh I was like oh I wasn't expecting this because you know because you're right I mean. There are so many things that we have seen in this in this genre now. I mean, superhero stuff is here to stay, and and we've seen variations of that. But the, 
but to me that was very reminiscent almost of like Watchmen or something where it was like oh there's some things going on here that uh, that's a little bit deeper than what I normally get I I understand um I I kept thinking about during especially that cold open it it was different but I kept thinking about um how much it reminded me of some of the plot threads in Black Lightning. No, uh, that was another show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Especially first season, especially first yeah. season Black Lightning. That was, yeah, yeah in my notes, uh, that was going to be another pull that I, uh, that I completely agree with you that there. Yeah. And then I also, and maybe it's a Netflix thing. I kept thinking about, um, they cloned Tyrone. Yeah. There were, so there, there, there are similar, very, mm. it's very similar. And it's not just because of the black aspect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just like the story points. Yeah. Um, and they do deal with powers and it's specifically black people giving powers and, yeah. and the, the oppression of fr- how these powers are given due to oppression from white supremacists. mainly. Mm. So, yeah. um, so I don't, I don't know. I, yeah. I, I see, I see the potential, but I'm yeah. not there yet. Yeah. Um, yeah. with them taking a an entirely fresh take on on this genre specifically, and maybe that's just also because the genre itself, there's been so much. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're right. I mean, and, and like, you know, and as was, I was preparing for tonight, the Black Lightning was definitely because, you know, it's funny, you know, because a, a lot of, you know, dialogue that's out there is that how, fre- you know, you know, because I got a 100% Rotten Tomato critic score and stuff. So I just, you know, so it's one of those things where it's like, part of me is sort of like, I've, you know, you and I have talked about a lot of different shows and stuff, and you pull, making that Black Lightning pull, and also They Clone Tyrone, which we watched last summer, it's great examples of like how I, 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 I pat ourselves on the back, quite frankly, mm-hmm. that we don't get stuck into the DC Marvel route that a lot of the larger channels and larger commenters do, because right. because I think this show is one that you know to me needs to be there's some there's some things about it i think if that yes it is in a in a sandbox that we play in but i think there there are some elements there that they're pulling on that you know and we'll see how the series progresses but there is the potential to really go take take this well-worn trope and well-worn genre into into some new and different places that yeah it may be influenced by other place other things but I think what they're doing here with the characterizations and, and, and really dealing with the everyday struggles of these characters and, and, and a good cross cross section of characters. I mean, we have, you know, Michael, who's just a hardworking guy, delivery driver, Sabrina, she's a nurse, you know, you know Taser, yeah, he's sort of the stereotypical, you know, gangbanger, Ta- you know, Rodney's <laughs> the mixed kid with trying to like, you know, become a pusher and Andre the ex-con. So, um, you know, all these little stories that they're, they're unfolded here so far has like gotten me intrigued as far as where they where they're going to go with these characters, and 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 it's not that they are, you know, they, they got these, they, you know, they met these superpowers like you said manifested themselves in different ways, and so I'm I'm just curious to see how, where where this where this show goes with that. Right, right. I like I said, we we're talking about the first two episodes. First yep. two episodes, a lot of setup, a lot of just it being introduced to the characters, the threads. You can tell in the second episode, though, that there is potential that they may have started at places that were familiar, mm-hmm. seem a bit like deja vu, or mm-hmm. we've seen this before, but that they're willing to take it into some different directions because. Yeah. Initially, from the get-go, what I appreciated about the second episode was um, was Dion. Dion mm-hmm. was like, "No, no, 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 no! You yeah. disappeared. Yeah, <laughs> we were we were <laughs> in the middle of this, and you literally disappeared. This ain't right." Like she was terrified, mm-hmm. um, and I found that to be very original because we never because never. because I mean, if we think about it, yeah, 
majority of the time they do the whole secret identity like my loved one can't know but exactly. no, that, the, that's not the secret in this relationship there is a different secret that kind of is repetitious but still <laughs> how do yeah. you tell someone that <laughs> especially yeah exactly yeah because even <laughs> exactly yeah because when michael goes to like you know goes to his friend's place and like you know tries to tries to tell him and then yeah. you know and he's like i have you know this happened to me it's happened to me then and then we do get he's like well, well show me right and right. then he's like and he just whatever you know he, he, he just can't perform but yeah. don't, don't, you know, um, which, you know, but I'll, I'll, it's also cool, interesting too to see like how people like, for example, Taser. Yeah, he, he was he was he was aware. You know, we learned in the second episode that he had been aware about a week or so prior to him getting stabbed by uh, Chuck, Chucky. Yeah, that um, that he, you know, that he knew he had this ability and stuff. And so, you know, so he's clearly, um, you know, has some more control over it and he uses that to his to his benefit in the second episode um whenever after he uh is cornered uh by chucky and his gang and um and, and so he, he's also gonna quickly realize though he may have that ability not everyone in his team does mm -hmm. like like he's one yeah he's not so so it'll be interesting especially the way they leave off the second episode with um, was it crazy who was coming? Because yeah. I, I got confused by some of the names. <laughs> yeah, so crazy. Yeah, so Chucky was the other, the rival, the the, okay. the, um, the tower. So Stop. we had the, our, yeah, so yeah. So we got yeah. the, the Sixers was Chucky, the young, the, the guys who came to the party. And they always, you know, and Tuzi was always like. Yeah, yeah. 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 Who was so like who rapping, jumping. That was crazy. The, 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 yeah. So crazy was the major drug dealer that is all over South London. Okay. Yeah. But the Tower Boys, they were not involved with drug dealing, but Correct. now Taser realizes like they exactly. need money, power, respect. Okay. Exactly. So something I was not expecting from the Taser storyline was the grandma. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because that scene was very I don't know how to describe it I was watching it and I'm like oh is she really I was I was waiting for it to be revealed that she's really running the tower boys <laughs> <laughs> because of the way he treated her I was like man okay you're gonna wow give geez but yeah. but I just I found that so I'm glad that they put that in there because mm -hmm. arguably taser is not the most appealing character so far that we've been introduced to, but you can see his love for his grandma yep. and his pain for what happened with his parents. I mean, I think yeah. they only mentioned the mom. Yeah. So Lord only knows when we'll find out about the dad and that relationship. So, so exactly. the kid has a bunch of trauma that he, he's really not dealing with well. So yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I guess again, more potential for it to not go the cliche route, and and for um, the character to grow overall. Mm -hmm. So. Yep. Agreed. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and yeah, and yeah. Speaking of other folks dealing with, you know, who, who not dealing with a secret identity trope, it was like Rod and and, and Spud, his uh, his 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 uh, his friend and dealer partner. Um, you know, with with you know, ending up in Scotland because of transportation issues. Whenever he <laughs> he's trying to make a drug deal and trying to catch a bus, and next thing you know, he's like in Edinburgh. But uh, Rod I'm is honest. Huh? <laughs> I just want to be honest about Rodney yeah. and my yeah. feelings. Very tempted to fast forward through all of his scenes. Very tempted. I like Rodney. I don't. I yeah. do not. There's something about Rodney, but I think too. But getting back to Taser real fast, whenever um, I just had, I still thought about that. Uh, whenever Tuzi was like, "What the, what the hell is in this fucking weed?" Whenever he did the disappear act for the first time, that was definitely like the line of the, uh, the line of the first two episodes for me at least. Uh, crack! I, I literally like just busted out laughing whenever he, uh, whenever he saw Taser go disappear. But yeah, but getting back to Rodney, I, I see where you, I can see why you want to fast forward through some of his scenes. But I don't know, it's just something like 
he's like the the lovable knucklehead of the group that I just kind of like I don't know. I just feel like there's something about him. I just like there's like some a, a charm about them about him that I just that that uh, keeps me from doing that. Mm. Um, I like Sabrina. I like yeah. now it's her sister, right? And we find right. out it's her younger sister. Yep. Who um what Ch- Chanel? I um yeah. yeah 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 yeah. I, re- I I think they said it like once. Who who has a thing for Michael? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um. So so th- we I I like them um. Sabrina's a bit reserved, a bit quieter, so mm-hmm. so it'll take a while to understand more. But we found out she's the oldest, hardworking yep. uh, nurse. Um, feels like she has to take care of everyone, mm-hmm. um, but so she's really just trying to find someone to take care of her. Yeah. Um, essentially, so and that is not Kevin. Okay, no. it's not <laughs> Kevin. Kevin not, is not at all. Not the one. And then there's AJ. Who or not AJ Andre, whose mm-hmm. son is named AJ, who yep. might be might end up making some uh, repeating his father's uh, mistakes, um, which we've we we kind of we don't know the details, but we know Andre has had a rough um, mm-hmm. few years, yep. um, divorcee, and trying to make child support, and just it ain't happening and. And he gets has a run in with an ATM machine and ends up breaking it. And damn it, Andre! <laughs> damn <laughs> the it. ATM, yeah, the ATM machine lost. But yeah, yeah. And, and he just took the money, and I'm yeah. and I'm sitting there like, really, really? There. Yeah. So there just so happens to be no one around witnessing this. <laughs> Except for those omnipresent cameras that just happen to be everywhere when somebody's power manifests. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, that all goes back to the yeah. cold opening, and yeah. and that, that's another thing they had to figure out a way to subtly put in the the big the the overarching bad corporation or mm-hmm. people who, but not but reserve that mystery. Um, yeah. And and I can appreciate all of the threads. I especially like the one with with Dion, who who appears to be a journalist. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because I, I know. Think, yeah, because yeah, I like. Yeah, because uh, she. Yeah, because she was talking about the, the the woman who we saw at the beginning, and mm-hmm. then there was also the young girl that we also saw, saw in the cell, um, in in the um. Yep, Sabrina, holding facility. Uh, yeah. Sabrina, uh, Jasmine. Jasmine. Yeah. Who yeah. Went- seen a few weeks ago and then they make sure we are we're aware that that is one of the people we saw in the cells yep yep and yep. also yeah and again just again get into the societal things as we talked about just like you know the you know if she's blonde the, the, the internet goes crazy but otherwise if it's a young black girl then you know you know yep. it takes somebody like a dion to like look out for that but uh but yeah um yeah, I think she. Yeah, she, so I think she does appear to be a journalist, and then, yeah, I really, I, I really like. You're, you're right. That was one of the things that definitely did stick out to me too. Was this her reaction when Michael did teleport in front of her, and and, and that was a a welcome scene to see. You know, see someone, um, you know. How 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 a real person probably would react if they saw someone they love disappear like that. <laughs> Or or how like like even Tuzi and his line mm-hmm. that you yeah. like about yeah. like like how it is a rarity where we see some authentic reactions mm-hmm. of someone you've known for forever suddenly you question if they're human. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you're yeah. and you're just like, am I in a dream? Like it is a very um very perplexing thing and so i'm glad we we got to see that Mm -hmm. it's important for these characters to have somewhat secrets because that allows mystery and also the opportunity for tension and um and you need that for drama so so it makes sense yeah Um, i was yeah (laughs) yeah exactly yeah i was to that point i was just like 
whenever Michael and Dion were sitting on the couch and, you know, he was dancing around the whole thing about the future and, and what he saw. And I was like, I was like, okay, please. I was like, don't just tell her, just tell her just for once break the mold, but they didn't. And I was like, damn it. I got to wait till another episode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, she's, yeah. she's going to figure it out eventually. Yeah. Um, yeah. If she, if and if it takes her too long, then right. she loses she, IQ points for the audience. Right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and also, yeah. I mean, and even even, and, but also another to your point about how people react to I me. Mean, she, you know, with 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 uh, Michael and, and Taser, she's like, look, every time your powers manifest itself, I mean, she's thinking like it's you know Taser's the issue. Right. Uh, so again, so it's just a, you know just th- what those triggers are and how people perceive them. Uh, you know, Michael still hasn't figured out how to how to make his stuff work. Sabrina, uh, I guess, well, you know, it, it, I know each episode, subsequent episode has the character's name as a title. So, um, so we'll, you know, we'll, I guess we'll see her get more confident in her powers and, and as far as, you know, being able to use them at will, as well as the other characters um, as we go forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we got we got six more episodes, and I'm sure by the end of the eight episodes, we'll understand. No, no it's actually it's only it's only six episodes. Oh, it's only six episodes. So yeah, we got so four more episodes. Yeah, four left, yeah. We got four more episodes, and I'm sure that by the end of it, we will know, understand the critical praise that it's been receiving so far. Um, and it definitely has potential. So we'll just yeah, we'll just it does. see it through. Um. And we hope everyone stays and also uh, watches it along with us. So yeah. on that note, Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Will M. Polk, W-I-L-L-M-P-O-L-K. And you can find me there, too, at S.J. Belmont, S-J-B-E-L-M-O-N-T. Please follow our crew on Twitter at Scene and Nerd. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and threads at Scene underscore N underscore Nerd. And visit our website, www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever your podcast. Good night, geek out. You're welcome.